بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد Welcome back, we continue with the 20th chapter Taha This chapter has 135 verses and the meaning of its name Taha we're told it is harfani la ya'lamu ma'nahuma illa Allah kabaqiyat al-huruf al-muqatta'ati fi muftatah ba'd al-sur So we're told that this name Taha that these are two letters from the Arabic alphabet that only Allah knows the meaning of what these you know this would mean and why he would have these just like some of the other chapters why he would have it start with some letters of the Qur'an, whether it's one, two, three, etc. Only Allah really knows. But the Shaykh also mentions a statement of Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala where he basically says, وَأَمَّا مَا يَذْكُرُهُ الْعَوَامُ أَنَّ يَاسِينُ وَطَّاهَ مِنْ أَسْمَاءِ نَبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ فَغَيْرُ صَحِيحُ Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi in his book تُحْفَةُ الْمَوْدُودِ بِأَحْكَامِ الْمَوْلُودِ He says, with regards to what some of the you know, the general people say that these are from among the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says that this is not correct. Why? He says, لَيْسَ ذَلِكَ فِي حَدِيثٍ صَحِيحٍ وَلَا حَسَنٍ وَلَا مُرْسَلٍ وَلَا أَثَرٍ عَنِ الصَّحَابَ رِضْوَانُ اللَّهِ لَيْهِمْ He says that there's no authentic hadith, nor is there even a hadith that is hasan, the different levels of what's authentic, nor is there a hadith in the sense of what's considered mursal where you have a tabi'i that is saying that the Prophet ﷺ said this which is from among the categories of the da'if hadith. He says, nor is there even a statement from the sahaba that say that this is from, these are from among his names sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, وَإِنَّمَا هَذِهِ الْحُرُوفُ مِثْلُ أَلِفْ لَا مِيمُ وَحَامِيمُ وَأَلِفْ لَا مْرَاءُ وَنَحْوُهَا He says, and these are no different than any of the other chapters who have the names, uh, the letters that begin with, for example, Hamim and Alif Lamim and so on. So just to understand that Taha and Yaseen are not from among the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why does Allah Ta'ala begin with these letters? Only He knows. What is the real meaning and intent of them? Only Allah Azza wa Jal knows. Sababu tasmiyatiha. Why is it named by Taha? We're told in Firadu Surati bi muftatahi harfay Taha dun ghayriha min al Quran. So it is the only chapter in the Quran that begins with and has these two letters that are mentioned. Therefore, it makes it unique. And because of that uniqueness, Allah has named it Taha. Asma'uha. Other than Taha, we're told that it does have some other names that it's known by. Of them, Surah to Musa alayhi salam, so the chapter of Musa alayhi salam, as well as Surah to Al-Kaleem, the chapter of Al-Kaleem, meaning the one that Allah Ta'ala spoke to him, the one that Allah spoke to him, and this is Musa again alayhi salatu salam. Its major objective, or its general objective, we're told, تَذْكِيرُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِقِصَّتَيْ مُوسَى وَآدَمَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ so the first main focus is that Allah Rabbul Alameen in this chapter he mentions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the stories of Musa and Adam. Why? Tasliyatan lahu as a form of condolence for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of all the hardship he was going through and what his you know ministry was like. He's telling him about Musa and Adam alayhi salatu wasalam so that he can find a sense of comfort in I be, in being able to identify and relate to his brothers from previous prophets and messengers, as well as taqwiyatan li qalbihi fi da'wati ila Allah. Furthermore, so that Allah would further reinforce for him his faith and his heart in what his mission is of calling people to Allah Rabbul Alameen. And this point is very important, Ahbab, because we want to remember that our job as Muslims is not to call people to Islam, it's to call people to Allah Rabbul Alameen. Islam is the pathway, Allah is the goal, He is the focus, He is the objective, He is everything, subhanahu So we want to hopefully make sure that we always remember that and keep that straight and correct. Sababu Nuzuliha, this is a Meccan chapter and we don't have anything authentic to tell us why the chapter was revealed or even some of its verses. What about Fadluha, its virtues? So again, the same story of what we were told by Ibn Mas'ud that it is from the first of chapters that were revealed and of what he had mastered radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. Munasabatu awwali surati taha bi akhiriha. The relationship of the beginning of the chapter with how it concludes 
الحديث عن فضل القرآن وشقاء من لم يعمل به It's about the virtue and the blessings of the Quran and the miserableness of the person who does not take it upon himself, does not take it to heart, does not work, uh, uh, act upon it, that that person is going to be miserable. فقال سبحانه وتعالى في فاتحتها ما أنزلنا عليك القرآن لتشقى We did not send the Quran, the Quran down upon you, to you. So that you would ever be miserable. So naturally, then we're being told that the purpose of the Quran being revealed is to do the opposite: is to dispel what there is of misery, of sadness, of sorrow, of rather to bring in happiness and and, and delight and bliss. وقال في آخرها ومن أعرض عن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنكا. And whoever turns away from my remembrance. They will certainly live a constricted life, a stressful life, a hard life. So subhanAllah, the Qur'an being a purpose for uh, goodness and happiness, and the person who turns away from Allah turning away from the Qur'an, which is all reminders, teachings and reminders about Allah Rabbul Alameen, that that person is going to live a very difficult life. They are not going to be happy. And this is to tell you in truth, not perception, right? In reality, not perception. Because somebody may look at a person and say, oh my God, they're so blessed and they're so happy and they're so healthy and they're so good. Yeah, that's what you can see. That's what you and I can see. But in reality, Allah only knows what that person is really struggling with. Because there's not a person who's going to turn their back on Allah Rabbul Alameen and become fully enslaved to what this material world is, except that it's going to be a source of pain and suffering for them. And Allah knows best. With regards to how this chapter relates to Maryam, which came before it, we're told, لما ذكر الله تعالى القرآن والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في خاتمة مريم بقوله سبحانه فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا And we have certainly made it easy for you to read and to pronounce and to speak, to recite so that you can be able to give the glad tidings to the believers as well as warn the people who are wicked, those who are sinful. That Allah Rabbul Alameen in mentioning the Qur'an in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Maryam in the ending of the chapter, he also then mentions them in the beginning of Taha, saying, we have not sent down to you the Qur'an. So you, the Prophet وسلم, the Qur'an, in the same way that he concluded Maryam, saying that in the language of the Prophet والسلام, so that this way he's able to give glad tidings to the believers, as well as warn those who are other than that. And we ask Allah Rabbul Alameen to truly bless us from those that become transformed by the Qur'an, because we do believe and we love Allah Azza wa Jal, we have full faith and trust in Him and we do the best that we can to show Allah Azza wa Jal our appreciation to Him and what He has blessed us with of guidance of the Qur'an, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and of everything else that is priceless and Allah Azza wa Jal is the best and He knows best. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mubarak ala Muhammad.